Hello everyone, my name is Angela and welcome to Let's Paint Now. Um, today is a very special session because we are going to be running a free class for you guys to enjoy our weekly Friday 2 to 4 paintings. So we have decided to actually make a couple of sessions like these for um, all those of you who wanted to try but who never had the time or were too busy. And I know it's the Christmas holidays now and a lot of you are at home and you will be having a good time with the family. So maybe it's a good time for you to give it a shot and try our Let's Paint Now online classes. So before we begin, I just wanted to let you know that we run weekly classes that are online and on site. So we always have every week a Friday class which is online happening through Zoom and another class which happens in Doha. That happens every Sunday, um, mostly five to seven or six to eight, depending on the event and the location. And we kind of move around the city. Regarding the online classes, we have something really special that we put together, especially for this end of year holidays. And that is what we call the gift cards. You can find the gift cards on our website. And it's basically bundles of classes of three, five or 10 classes together that you can buy at a discounted price. So if you wanna get a cheaper price per ticket, then that's a fantastic gift that you can either buy to yourself or offer it to somebody. So please um, log on to your web to our website or www.letspaintnow.com and you can check in the gift card section at the bottom. Uh, all the three packages will be there for you to book. So that's going to be sending you a voucher, a voucher list with codes that you'll be applying to each and every class you want to attend without any fee just by using the code. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about today and the class we're going to be having is called the City of Light. So we're going to be drawing Paris and the Eiffel Tower, which I absolutely love and I'm connected to very deeply. And on another note, I also wanted to tell you that our classes are designed in a way that you could enjoy them, whether you're a beginner or an advanced painter. So you really need no background whatsoever into painting. I'll be behind your back holding every step very clearly to you and trying to make it as simple as possible so that everyone can paint. And every time people write to me and ask me like, what, what is the age you can actually, we have people like from three, three and a half year of age sitting next to people that are 70 and beyond and painting in the same class. And that is absolutely no problem. So there's no age limit and there's no level required because the technique is extremely simple. Now I'm going to break it down for you. So step by step, we're going to take you through the journey of the painting. And once we're done, you're going to see the finished product. And again, if the finished product doesn't exactly look like what I had in mind or what you saw in the video, it's absolutely fine because we don't care. The point is to have fun with some paint, water, brushes, and just have a cool, um, a cool time together basically whether you're with friends family or even on your own I do paint on my own all the time it's absolutely fine as long as you're having fun okay so we're gonna move now to the materials that I will be using in order for this painting to become a reality so what I usually use as a set of brushes and I advise all my students to do so because that's the basics of any painting that we want to do is a set of three main brushes I always have a big brush with a lot of bristles. A flat one mostly um, is more practical because it covers very easily. And a mid one, which is a round brush and a small one. And I give them names and you can also do so, but I will be using these names during the class. So just so you know what I'm talking about. This one is called the Papa Bear. The mid brush is called the Mama Bear and the small brush is called the Baby Bear. Okay. Uh, on another note, I also will be using a bucket of water where I have also a bunch of other brushes But a bucket of water is always useful You always want to wash your brush whenever you have excess of paint or you want to kind of make it more liquid I also have a couple of more buckets next to me which you cannot see But that is for me to be able to swap them and regularly having two buckets is always very good because you'll be able to one wash the brushes that are not clean in one of them and in the second one you'll be using the um, the water as is to just liquefy the paint so always good to have two and also you could use them for a light color or a dark color that's also a good way to separating both buckets I also have a nice palette here which is a paper palette I call it it's wonderfully coated with some uh, with something on top that doesn't allow the paint to kind of blend with the paper so you could be using a paper plate that's possible although it does blend a little bit more and kind of loses the pigment 
And I've also placed the colors ready. I also have a paper towel, a towel, sorry, not a paper one, a towel that is here to remove the excess of paint and another clean towel for the water excess. That's also useful. Finally, I have, a, um, I have used a scotch tape called washi tape to kind of solidify the paper onto the table so that it does not move. And I, I've taped it in a way that it kind of gives me a beautiful white frame once I peel the painting at the end of the class. So that will allow me to kind of give it a final look also without having to frame it in any way. So these are my washi tapes. They come in different colors, different sizes. You can see there's different beautiful patterns. You can have a floral pattern, you can have bird patterns, but you can also have really simple ones. So you have all sorts of colors and names and sizes. You can see these are smaller. I absolutely love them. They're wonderful for gift wrapping and they are uh, paper made, so they do not tear your paper. I have a lot of these. I am absolutely in love with them. And then finally, the colors that I will be using. So I always use acrylics. This is my favorite brand so far. It's called Dollar Roni and it's a graduate acrylic. So it's not really advanced and it doesn't really cost um, too much. It's very affordable and at the same time, the pigments are very good quality and you can use them into blending colors. What I use really use as, as colors are the primary. You can see this is a primary red. So I have a primary red over here, a primary blue and a primary yellow alongside the black and white that I always use in almost every painting. You also have more affordable brands, which here I have the Faber-Castell as well. I use it for white. Usually for white and black, you don't necessarily need expensive pigments because they're like, they're there to blend colors together and to make the colors go lighter and darker. So it's not really a big must for them to be very heavily pigmented. Okay, so these are pretty much all the tools that we will be using during the class. So let's get going. First and foremost, I want to work on the background. I will apply the colors of the background. So I would like to put my Papa Bear brush into the water. That is how we wake up every brush. I always say my, I tell my students, what do you do when you want to wake up in the morning? You wash your face. So the same applies to a, a brush. So you basically have all three brushes in the water. Okay, don't leave them long because it might hurt the bristles, but if it's for a short period of time, it's absolutely fine. So I've got my Papa Bear into the water and I'm going to start by blending the very first color. So the colors we are going to be using here in the palette, like I was showing you beforehand, is red, a blue and yellow for the primary color, but I will also be using black and white, okay? So what we will be doing as a first color is a combination of two of the shades together. The very first color we're going to be doing is a very vibrant orange. So I would like to mix the red and the yellow together. Red is extremely powerful as a pigment. So I'm going to be blending a small amount of red in a bigger amount of uh, yellow. So the ratio is more of two to one. So for that, I'm gonna take a very small amount of red, pull it on the side and then grab more yellow and mix them together until I get that very shine bright color of orange that I'm looking for, okay? Once I have that shade, I'm going to start applying it and I'm going to tell you where. You're going to be looking at the canvas in this way. This is half of the canvas or the paper that you're using. You're going to be, you're going to be moving a little bit below that line. So the horizon line of my painting is going to go a little bit below that line. So we're going to do this line that I'm talking to you about right at this point. So I'm going to be tracing it and you're going to be doing it with the same orange color that you just picked up and try to trace a line that is as steady and as straight as possible. It's okay if it's a little bit wobbly and it's okay if you have to go back at it several times. You don't need to have it perfect in one shot. That is not at all the point. Okay? So this is the first color we're going to be applying. Now I'm going to be taking um, another shade of color and I'm going to blend it with this. So the second color that I'm actually taking is white. I want my color to be a little bit lighter. I don't want it to be a strong shade of orange. So for that, I need a little bit of white to kind of make it lighter. So you're going to be tapping with the tip of the brush. You're going to be dab dabbing, I call that. Dab dabbing a little bit of white with your Papa Bear brush. And I want you to start pushing this color all the way upwards. So I'm going to tell you what are the other colors we're going to be integrating, but first let's just make this color slightly lighter. 
So for the blending of these, the technique that I'll be using is not a smooth blend. I don't want the blend to be very smooth, I want the blend to be etchy. And by etching, I mean I want it to have a little bit of texture to it. So for that, I don't want you to be doing it with too much water or too much white, because white and water are actually two agents that help the blend to be smooth. What I want it to be is very rough and raw. So the first time we did the orange color, then I asked you to apply a little bit of white. Now we're going to be injecting some red, some primary red color, which looks like a little bit like magenta. And you're going to be going and applying it on top of your orange color, okay? But as you're applying it, I want you to do lines, almost like pendulum, you know, that don't necessarily blend too much with the orange. Okay, first it's gonna look like the two colors are just placed next to one another. But then if you actually go and do these lines a little bit like, very light-handedly, a little bit as if you're undusting, I always say that, but like undusting the canvas, very light-handedly, you're gonna see how they start merging into one another. And again, I don't want it to merge too much, so I'm going to be leaving this area a little bit undone, okay? So let's proceed with the colors. We're constantly going to be pushing this upwards, okay? Now we're gonna take a little bit more magenta, so a stronger shade of red, and I'm going to be doing the same. The gradient is actually leaning upwards, so it has a diagonal feel. So as you can see, as I'm applying the gradient, I'm actually moving upwards. So I'm actually shifting this into becoming a more diagonal line and not a straight one, okay? So I'm doing another batch of stronger magenta color, but this time pulling the whole thing way higher, okay? So now you should be having a set of three colors, an orange, a light shade of mix between the two, and a darker shade of red. The next color is a purple shade. How do we make purple? We obviously blend blue and red together. But in this case, blue is a very strong pigment, so the same scenario as red and yellow happened is going to happen over here. I'm just going to take a small amount of blue and put it in the middle, and then mix it with a double ratio of red, which, mix, which mixes a one to two um, ratio, so a way more red, double the amount of red, red basically, uh, or primary red, to the blue ratio. And adding to this, I'm going to be taking a little bit of white paint and also adding it to the whole blend, just for me to see the color better, because sometimes when the color is very dark, I cannot see the shade, okay? So there you go. Now I have a wonderful purple right over here. You're gonna be doing the same, like I said, for the red and just doing a pendulum movement and applying this wonderful purple right next to the red. As you can see, my lines are going more and more up. So I'm kind of leaning towards a very sharp diagonal line. What happens over here and what is happening between the two colors is very normal. They're not blending perfectly and I'm, I don't want them to blend perfectly. But if I want these two to be smudging in one way or another, I cannot do it anymore with the purple or else I will be pulling the purple down. For that, I'll have to just wash my brush completely, the Papa Bear brush, remove all the excess of paint and make my brush almost fully clean, tap it the excess with water and go back with the lightest shade of the two, which in this case is the red color. So with the red color again on my brush, I'm going to be blending this area between the two, but not a smooth blend, blend again, a rough blend, which is just about brushing diagonally like this, the two colors together and having a, a kind of a, a gradient going on basically, you know? So I'm not really blending them very smoothly. I'm kind of just trying to make the border more, um, more fluid but yet I'm also retaining this textural feeling that I had in the beginning, okay? So with the red, I kind of move that forward. If you want, you can juggle back with some purple if you really like the effect and pull back some purple down. But be careful, usually when we do this, we tend to kind of go back to square one and pull the purple all the way to the bottom, which is a little bit what I just did here. I'm gonna go back and push the red a little bit higher again, okay? So I'm gonna push the red slightly to the top so it doesn't go all the way down. There we go. So now we've got our gradient going on. We have our orange, we have our red, and we have our vibrant purple. 
Now is the time for our next shade, which in this case is the dark shade of blue. When I say dark, I mean there is no white in it. So pure shade of blue straight from my palette. That is the next shade that I'm adding right now over here. And the same blending technique which we used in order to blend the purple and the red is going to be used over here as well. Like very raw, very raw and rough at the same time and very um, spontaneous somehow, you know? It's not really calculated, it's very fluid, but at the same time it has this nice texture to it. And now as I go to the corner, what I want to do is I would like to have the color become lighter. The reason why I want that to happen is because I actually want to make a moon at the corner of this painting. So if I want a moon, then I will have to lean towards dark lighter shades. In this case, I'm going to grab some blue and white together. I always do that, by the way, I never kind of blend it on the palette. And I'm going to apply a lighter shade of blue all the way to the corner. So I'm going to push the lighter shade to reach the end of my canvas all the way to the border, okay? And that is where later on we will be placing the moon, okay? So roughly, this is how your journey to, towards a gradient is going to be looking like. Now, obviously you can adjust it, obviously you can go back on top of things and make it like a second coating or a third. For instance, I would love for it to be a little bit darker over here, I'm gonna go back with my purple and Give it a slightly darker shade of blue, which is what I'm doing right now, this ultramarine feeling. So you can adjust the gradient to your own taste, it's up to you. But the main colors that we will be using are already there and you can see them. Okay, I'm gonna also slightly rework on the gradient over here just to show you a more smooth finish. And we will be ready to move on to the next stage. I'm gonna smoothly try to blend in the purple over here with the red okay and then do the same just over here and then blending them over the purple is wonderful but it has this tendency to kind of push everything down you know and you, you don't have any more space for the other colors so it's kind of all smudged together at the bottom okay so this is pretty much the first gradient that we wanted to have and now it's there. We're gonna leave it to dry for a little bit. Meanwhile, we're gonna be working on the lake at the bottom. So the lake at the bottom is a reflection of everything that's happening in the sky. So for that, the same amount or the same colors are going to be used with a slightly lighter shade. In this case, we're going to be adding more white to whatever is happening in the bottom part. Okay, so we're gonna start with a nice shade of orange. But the difference, by the way, with the lake is that all the colors are more horizontal than, um, than going upwards like a diagonal shape. So let's start with the lake. The same brush. I'm using the Papa Bear brush, but in this case, I'm using a vertical kind of rendition. And also, the second thing that I told you, a lighter shade of the orange. So I blend my orange, which I had from the beginning, with a little bit of white. And I go over this borderline that I had right over here in order to make it more um, lit. So the first, very first line looks like a salmon orange basically and that is the main element of my lake. Okay, you could fix this line later on as well because we're going to be doing it with black but as a first step that is the colors that I'm going to be asking you to use. Orange with a bit of white involved in it. Then the same colors that we used previously are going to be coming um, into action. We're gonna have a darker shade of orange, so a little bit of a darker shade right after that. But as I, I cannot repeat it enough, all the colors that we are going to be applying have some white in it. So everything is slightly lighter, okay? So even the orange, which is a little bit stronger, is still imbued with some of the orange um, uh, white color. Then I'm gonna go with my red, I'm basically applying all the colors that I use on top. So I'm going back with my red. And I, as you can see, the blend is way easier when colors are horizontal because that's so much easier for the brush because the brush has a horizontal shape, you know, so it blends just so much easier. And then I'm gonna go with the purple. If you don't have some more, just create as, as you go, just like I just did. It's gonna have some purple over here. And always adding a little bit more white to it which is wonderful and it lights the whole thing up beautifully. 
And then finally, we're gonna add some of the blue, which we talked about uh, at the top of the painting. And we're gonna blend it with my purple right over here. So basically the same colors, the yellow, the orange, the, the yellow mean, I mean the light shade of orange, the darker shade of orange, the red, the purple and the blue were all shades that we used at the top of the painting. I'm just repeating them in a more horizontal manner in order for me to cover the, um, the lake area. So the thing is, right now, you're not seeing much where this is going, but in fact, the moment the black color is going to come, or even the Eiffel Tower is going to be applied, that is when you're going to be seeing things come together and kind of uh, make sense, basically. So now, for now, you're just trusting me and just kind of following the steps almost blindly. But the moment I will tell you, let's apply the black and do all that, you're gonna see that everything is going to make sense to you. Just reinforcing the lighter area, because I kind of did the same thing that I told you not to do, which is make sure not the darkest color to push things up and take over. So now I'm kind of readjusting it and giving it a smoother finish. All right, so now we are ready to be adding these two, um, as you said, uh, foliage slash mountainous areas on the side. There's no mountain, it's just going to be grass because in Paris, there's no mountains in the middle of, of the Eiffel Tower. But so what I want you to do is just to add some grass in order to make it look like as if it's kind of giving this surrounding to the Eiffel Tower itself. So for that, I'm going to be asking you to use the Mama Bear brush, which is a medium sized brush. Okay, so a Mama Bear brush can roughly have size six to size, what is this, a 10? So it, she could be between these two um, sizes, okay? So for now, I'm going to be using the smaller Mama Bear kind of um, that I have, and we're going to be applying what I call the grass area, okay? So for that, it is an area like looking like a mountain -y thing, but for, for the first and very uh, initial step, I would like for you to apply the very, um, the very first horizon line. So the horizon line is the line that is actually cutting the sky from the lake. So that line is going to be applied with black color and the mama bear brush. So don't worry too much, it's going to be looking really bold and really confident. So don't worry too much into applying it. And you don't need to have it extremely thin also, just medium thin. The thickness of the Mama Bear brush is good enough. Okay, so just applying that like this all the way to the end is wonderful. Again, mine is not the straightest one in the world, so it's completely fine if yours is not either. Now what's gonna happen from both sides, we're gonna be bringing some of those grass and like foliage or greenery, which is going to be pitch black at the moment, you're not gonna see anything, but you're gonna be faking some grass or um, foresty feeling by doing these cloud bumps, I call them. Okay, so it's like little bumps that you're gonna be doing. My black is pretty thick, the pigment is really heavy. So you're gonna be doing little shapes that look like dancing round and rounds, and you're gonna be dab dabbing them in order for them to kind of go completely low and disappear at before the middle part of the painting. Careful, it's before the middle part. So it's not even yet having reached the middle area. And then what you're gonna nicely do is go and fill in both of those areas. So you're gonna fill in the right area and you're gonna fill in the left area, okay? I'm gonna be doing the same over here. It could be not the same size, it could be a little bit flatter or like a little bit more relaxed and then leaning towards a completely flat render okay there you go and then we're going to be just filling it in with black all the way there you go wonderful so now we've kind of framed it on both sides this is what is i call is the the foliage area or the grass area or the the very um foresty kind of area we're gonna put mama bear into the water and wash her real well and make sure that there is no black residue anymore left on the brush itself and this is the perfect time by the way if you want to swap your water to kind of use another bucket of water because the colors we're going to be using after this are not as dark as black so i've changed my water bucket for a cleaner one and now i'm going to be applying the moon the moon is located somewhere around this area, exactly where I told you um, it is going to be. 
So with the same Mama Bear brush, if you pick some white color with the tip of your brush, you go into this area. I always stabilize my hand with my pinky and trace a kind of nice circle over here, just not too big because she's not the hero in this painting. The Eiffel Tower is. So for now, we're just going to give her a middle size circle. It's going to give us a nice Parisian night feel to the painting and we're going to be ready for the Eiffel Tower herself. Yeah, we call her um, a she in, in, in France. We, we tell the Eiffel Tower as a girl. We always say that. So yeah, she could be a he or a she for what I know. Beautiful tower. Okay, I'm kind of curving it and adjusting the moon circle to be as perfect as possible. And there we go. Another cool thing we're gonna do with the white brush and mama bear is add more reflection over here in the center. And that will happen by using your very light-handed brush with the mama bear brush and making very smooth little lines in white. Not too strong, not too light, just what is needed, but a little bit of reflection, you know, like some magic in the water is what we need. Okay, so we're gonna add a bit more over here and then a bit more over here. You don't need to concentrate only in the middle. You can push these lines to be on the sides as well. Ah, by the way, I forgot to tell you what is the paper type that I'm using because that's also really important if you're not using a canvas. It's important for two reasons. It's important because if you use something that is below 300 GSM and you're using very thick coated um, acrylics, then your water, your paper is going to wobble and it's going to make like really weird waves that you're not going to maybe be able to manage. So for that, I highly advise you use a 300 and plus um, GSM kind of pigment uh, paper, granulation, sorry, paper. So that exists in every store and it's not something really rare to find. So 300 is good. If you found 2 to 250, that's also fine. But don't go below that because then the pigment is way too strong and the paper will completely um, be destroyed while you're painting. And the whole effort that you will have put in order to make this whole thing beautiful will, will not be showing or it will completely be um, lost in the wobbles of the paper. So try to get a thicker paper so that you can actually have fun and apply as many coats as you would like, okay? So now we have the beautiful uh, reflections on top of the water. We are ready to apply the Eiffel Tower. You can go back and forth as many times as you'd like. You can do two coats of highlights, by the way. One that is more blended at first, and then you can do one that is kind of um, sharper, if I may say, like stronger on top of it, okay? So let's start by working on the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower from my end is going to be mixed between the color. It's going to be a mix of yellow and white because she's completely lit. So I really want her to shine through this beautiful sunset night. So I'm gonna make a nice blend of white and yellow together. Okay, so make sure you give me a good blend of the two. I would say the ratio is a 50-50 in this case. So it's not, a f um, there's no more yellow than white, but it's literally a 50-50. And for this step, you could be using your baby bear brush as a first, or you could be using your mama bear, whatever you're comfortable working with. Okay, personally, I'm gonna use my baby bear brush because she's more precise and gives me a better result. So the Eiffel Tower is made out of three floors, okay? So just so you know, she has her legs at the bottom, which we're gonna be taking care of. And then there is the first floor. Obviously, you know that she has a triangular shape. The first floor is obviously um, located somewhere around here. And what is funny about the two floors is that they almost have the same distance. And then comes the third floor, which is gonna go all the way, oops, so almost towards the moon, and that is the very high end of the tower. That is the most expensive floor to visit, and that is the most wanted floor to be visited. Because you can see all of Paris from the top of that tower, it's just gorgeous. And um, yeah, it's very scary. If you have a little bit of uh, height fear, you cannot go there. All right, so first and foremost, I would like for you to visualize where you're going to position your tower. Is it going to be very high, little? It's up to you. From my end, I'm going to be placing a little dot for me to know that this is the head of my tower. So this is where I'm going to be ending my final point, okay? So I know 
that this point is where my tower is going to be leaning. So every line that I will do, I will know that it has to go all the way to that spot and like kind of stop there, okay? Now, like I told you, there are several floors, but if I look at that point and I go all the way down in a straight line, I know where to put her first legs. And the first legs are going to be done through an arch, okay? So the first one, I picked some yellow and white color, by the way, with my baby bear brush. And so I will do the first arch very nicely at the bottom of that dot. If you want, you can also place a little dot at the center just to visualize it better, um, but it's not going to be needed because we're not going to use it, okay? So that is the internal curve of the tower itself. Then will come the two legs, and the legs, we're going to be pulling them all the way to the top, okay? So I would like for you to trace a little triangle where you put that dot, okay? A teeny tiny triangle, very pointy, as pointy as you can. Okay. So that way you actually have two points at the bottom. It's like it wasn't really precise what I just did to show you, but I'm just gonna clean it. Okay. So you have one point on this side and one point here. So whatever line we're gonna be doing now, one is going to be leaning all the way to the left side and the other one is going to be leaning all the way to the other side. Also, if you're able to tilt your canvas, that is also a very good uh, opportunity for you to have more control over the line because from my end I'm not going to be moving it at all and that is not an easy thing to do to be tracing straight lines while you're actually holding um, the canvas straight okay so let's try and do this first and foremost I'm gonna place the first legs position which is over here I want the thickness to be like this and roughly the other one is gonna come from here. So basically I'm gonna curve these lines to go all the way to the point which I just traced of the triangle, okay? So you take a deep breath and you, you hold your breath so that your hand doesn't actually move. <laughs> I'm kidding, you just do it your own way. Whatever works for you is wonderful. So you're gonna curve it and you're gonna constantly be looking at that point where we're gonna reach. You don't need to do it in one shot, by the way. You kind of can stop and look back at the line and do it again, very gently and slowly. This is roughly what I'm looking forward to be doing, okay? I'm gonna do the same with the other hand, with the other leg. I'm gonna be pulling it upwards very gently and also, I don't want to go really fast because I don't want to be doing a curve that I don't like. So I'm going to be gently trying to mirror the other side of my tower. I'm going to pull it upwards and try to make it as straight as possible. So see, I realize that it's coming a little bit more towards the right side. So I will be working on this area in order to fine tune it and fix it afterwards. Okay. So now is the time we're going to be building the floors, okay? So I want you to mark each floor the way I'm going to be doing it right now. So the first floor is exactly located over here. So I want you to trace a line on the first floor and say, this is floor number one, okay? There you go. A thicker yellow line, basically. Nothing very fancy. Then I'm gonna be marking the second floor and this is floor number two. So I was saying it's almost the same distance from the floor to the one. So you kind of want to have both at the same distance. That is floor number two. And then floor number three, all the way to the top, is located over here, okay? So you kind of want to mark it as well. And now on top of that, you're going to be adding the head of the tower, which is a little square, like this. And you're gonna be adding a little hat to finish the tower. It's a little triangle, so a square and a little triangle. And then the antenna that my dad always used to tell me, there's the antenna of all of Paris on top of the tower. There you go. So now you clearly have all three floors marked very, very nicely. Another thing that we wanna mark is an elevator that goes from the third floor all the way to the second floor. So that is a wonderful elevator. We want to mark it very strongly and it's at the center of the second layer that I asked you to put. So it's at the center of this area. So you want to mark that one down as well. 
okay? And then similarly, what I'm gonna be asking you to do is add the continuation of these legs. So over here also there's a big gap. All I want you to do is kind of connect this as if you see that this leg is going up. It's a bit of architectural thing, but if you just follow my steps, we'll be good to go. We're gonna be drawing with a brush, basically. This is pretty much it, okay? And I'm gonna ask you to add another set of lines in the middle over here. We're gonna break that one even one more time. Here it is. And then that line is going to continue all the way to the bottom. So it's a bit of an architectural piece, but obviously she's an architectural gorgeous beauty. So we have to try to build her as believable as possible. Okay. So now we're going to be adding, we're going to be accentuating this tower with a second line that is going to pull this line a little bit further up. Okay. There we go. And now we're going to start the grid work, which I call the grid work, but it's actually just doing a grading all over the tower. So we're going to start by doing diagonal lines with our very thin yellow color just like this, yellow and white. You're gonna be creating a grid all the way from one end to the other and doing just nice lines, yellow lines. And just stop wherever the legs stop. So what is going to, to do to be happening with these lines is like you're gonna create an effect of this very highly sophisticated metallic work going on on the tower. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing on each floor. So that is floor number one. And then you're going to be doing it in the other side as well. So you're going to be greeting it on this direction as well. All the way, just like this. Okay, you're going to be greeting it on this side as well. Don't forget to have some white always incorporated in the color because white gives it this very nice shine. At the end, you know, you can accentuate the borders of the tower and have like really a lot of... Um, a, a, a way thicker coat for the border basically but for now it's pretty much enough so what I mean by by accentuating is going back over these lines and make them slightly thicker and more whitish and covering them with more highlight you know so that she vibrates even more so that's the very first one for the second one this middle area is empty so we're not gonna be gridding that middle area we're just gonna be gridding the two sides try to keep the same um, the same diagonal uh, directions basically and I'm gonna do it on both sides there we go I'm gonna be doing on this side as well it's a little bit tricky but once you get the hang of it you really enjoy it it's almost like drawing with a brush then you're gonna do the other side as well see my lines are not all the same thickness and they're not super thin but it's totally fine I'm just gonna add some highlights in this floor because this floor is gorgeous too. It's a beautiful balcony with a lot of um, telescopes so you can see Paris. You put a coin and you jump on it and it's, it's just wonderful. So that is the first floor, which I'm accentuating with some white. Then I'm accentuating the second one also with more white. A little bit scarier as a floor. And then there's the third one where there's the restaurant and all the gift shops. So for this, we're also going to be grading it. I'm just going to be going back on top of this line that I just added in the middle, which is now completely blended now because it was really thin in pigment. And then I'm gonna also accentuate the two lines. Now I'm confident about the positioning of the line so I can go back over these two on both sides. One here and another one over here as well. And now I can really happily add my grading. And there you go. So you go with the same direction that we talked at the bottom. Just continuing and going upwards with it. Just beautifully filling in these shapes. Okay? And then you do the same for the other side, which is grading again parallelly. The only highlight in the middle would be the elevator area. And there you go, this is one direction. And then you take back some more yellow and white and then you do the other side as well. 
And now this is not the proper gridding that she has. Obviously it's way more intricate, it's way more beautifully worked, like almost like a embroidery, embroidery almost, but with metal when you see her for real and she's, she's so majestic. But we're just creating an effect that is easy to do and kind of reminds us of her as well. So now what, I'm to what I was telling you to do is accentuate the outer lines and try to make them stronger so that you can have a more vibrant and solid structure on the outside. So you can go back with some white and accentuate it over here and accentuate it on that side as well. Now you can do that for both sides. We actually don't mind doing it in both sides. The important is for me to, to feel that she's actually fully lit. And the more white vibrancy you give her, the lighter she's going to become. I'm either gonna add some on top of the tower, on the third floor, you know, the moon is on this side, so it's gonna look gorgeous when you actually do that on this direction. And you just pull this one line all the way to the top, really nice and lit. All right, everyone. So we now have the final two steps of the painting. We've placed all the basic elements, but there's some little fine tuning. There's a little bit of juice that needs to be added to make it more believable. So first and foremost, I want to add some shadows over here in the water area so that this um, this whole scenery looks like really reflected on the other side. For that, I've created the same purple blend that I've got before, and I'm gonna just apply it a little bit on onto the water area at the bottom. So I'm gonna do it in a way that it actually doesn't cover all of it, but it just gives me a nice blend on the sides, coming from this area and the other side from here, so that it actually looks like it's covered, um, it's covered the, the lake. So you're gonna brush it with a very nice purple, light purple, just on the borders of the canvas. No, no need to go all the way to the center. You're just gonna slightly, gently brush some purple, so a blend of red and blue, like this onto the canvas. You do it very nicely and very gently so that you don't cover all of the painting. And try to have a medium level of water situation going on so that it's not very watery, but at the same time, it's not very dry as well. So I'm just brushing it so gently, like it's almost like I'm barely touching the canvas. And I'm going with this purple all around it. So I'm kind of giving a nice border. I'm even gonna go at the bottom area, to just kind of wrap all around this painting and make sure that it just comes together very cool. Doing it at the bottom as well. So I brought it on the sides and I'm gonna bring it over here. And I'm gonna do also a little bit on the other side, bringing some purple. You can always add some white, by the way. White is a nice magical blend that works in any case. So white is very cool. If you wanna brush some white in, no problem. But I'm always leaving the center empty. You can see I'm not trespassing, I'm not going in the center. I'm nicely always respecting my middle area being very colorful and very strong. So I'm moving my purple all the way to the bottom and connecting it with the other purple on the other side. So that way I kind of wrapped the whole painting around on both sides and made sure that it comes together nicely. Now what am I left with? What am I left with is a nice gradient here, but I don't have my, my Eiffel Tower reflection and that is not possible. I for sure need to have a nice reflection at the bottom. But the reflection is, is not really precise. It doesn't need to be to the point. So I'm gonna take some of that yellow color and I'm gonna be tracing roughly some of the lines into the water, but not all of them, just very, very, very roughly and almost clumsily, you know? I don't want it to be perfect. I don't want it to be clean. And I don't want it to be at the exact same place. So you know how I, it's as if almost, if I'm a right-handed person, I'm tracing it with my left hand and vice versa, you know, I'm just wanting to look a little bit clumsy. I think this is more than enough. You really don't need a strong reflection. You really need it to be very, um, very soft and very uh, clumsy. You can even smudge it with your hand if you want, just for it to blend with the background and make it look even messier. I personally love it when it, they all blend together and kind of give me this finished look. You could also do one more thing, which is go back to the white color that you've got and add more strong reflections on top of things. That is also a way for you to kind of sign the very nice ending of the highlight, you know, like kind of accentuating the very strong highlights on top of the lake. So that way you've kind of placed all the colors. You see a little bit of the reflection. If you want to make it stronger, you could even 
make it a bit more strong. Going back at it and just adding the small layer so you don't tell me we don't see my Eiffel Tower and where is it gone, etc. Now you can see it. Okay, there you go. And now we can say that we are absolutely done with the bottom part of the painting. Now the only thing that I would add on top is a starry night. And a starry night is not possible without this wonderful technique of um, star making, which is the dab dabbing a brush onto another brush. How do we do that? We take a brush that is a medium sized brush, just like the Mama Bear brush. And then we take another longer brush. In this case, I'm gonna take my Super Papa Bear, try to make them all clean. And one of them has to be loaded with some paint. In this case, my Mama Bear is going to be loaded with some paint. And I'm gonna make a drumming session and drum some white paint on top of the topper area, basically, of my tower. But don't do it really closely, because if you do it really closely, you might get bigger blobs of color and you're not happy about it. So try to do it very gently and try to do it a little bit high on the painting. And now you have more control, so you see if you wanna add more of it and you wanna kind of reinforce it with a little bit more paint. And you kind of add a nice starry effect to the painting itself. And that's what brings all the magic of a night in Paris, in this beautiful city of light. Now, obviously you can go back on top of these nice little dots and you can make some of them more accentuated. You can even have them in the water, obviously, because this all reflecting top to bottom, everything is kind of coming together. And I would highly recommend do this final little touch of taking your tiny brush and making some of these a little bit bigger just to give it more magic to it, okay? If you feel your tower is not lighting enough also, you can do that. You can add a bit more highlights. But personally, I feel she's pretty lit and when it gets dry, we're gonna see the final effect. But then I'm gonna add a little bit more of the stars here and there that are lighting strongly. And that's gonna give me a more magical effect to the whole painting. And there you go, this is your starry night in Paris or your city of light painting. And I'm gonna finally show you what happens when I peel this scotch tape off, which is my lovely washi. Look at that. I have a wonderful white frame that appears and it's pure clean and I don't need to do anything. I could literally just buy any glass frame and put it in. It's already framed by itself. So just peeling in the final two sides of this very gently and it doesn't tear the paper. It's so soft on the paper. You don't even need to soften it prior to the sticking. And the final one, there you go. And this is your beautiful painting, ready-made. All right, I hope you liked it. I hope it was easy to make and I hope you enjoyed it. So you just went through a Let's Paint Now session with myself, Angela. I hope you liked it. I hope you had a good time. If you did, just tell your friends about it and be more into joining me next week for another free session uh, during these holidays. And I hope you'll have some nice tea and hot chocolate to enjoy while we're painting all together. Wait for the next theme. I would also recommend you go and have a look on our website and check the upcoming classes in the 2021 year. I, I will also be posting some of those so you can see what's going to be happening before everyone else in January, whether you're in Doha or anywhere in the world for that matter, because I will be updating slowly, slowly what's going to happen in our online classes. So look forward for that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. www.letspaintnow.com If you enjoyed these and want to offer these as packages or bundles as well of classes, they are available on our website through gift card section. You can find bundles of three tickets, five tickets or 10 tickets. And obviously the bigger the bundle, the cheaper the ticket is. Big love to you. Thank you for joining me today. And I really, really hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye. Have a nice Friday.